I was scrolling YouTube a little bit last night, and I came across this short interview video of Alex Kickle on SLU and one of its potential negative side effects if used in a high dose for a long enough time. And I thought it was pretty interesting. Let's take a look. Ultimate fat loss for the next 12 or 20 weeks because no one's really getting shredded in six or eight weeks. I mean, some people can if you're already lean, but that's not most people. Usually if you're doing that, that lower dosage, longer duration, I'd go with 100 to maybe 400 micrograms over 12 to 20 weeks and then take maybe half of that time, maybe even a fourth of that time off. It's not so much that you need time off of it. It's more the fact that again, it's so chemically strong that right. there's other portions of the mitochondria that in my mind starts to get weak and you almost have to bring in a mod C to fix the damage that SLU did. So generally I go, if you're doing lower dose, it's that longer duration, 12 to 20 weeks, and then probably take maybe half that time off to make it simple and then you'd have to bring in something else. Because no matter what, we know mitochondrial health is so important for everything. So the question is, is he right or is he wrong? Well, I think he's probably right. Now, if you look around and you dig into some of the research, you might have trouble finding something that would specifically back this up, but that's because SLU is so new and bodybuilders are using it at such high doses. I think that he's been around long enough and has seen enough that he knows what's coming down the tracks. And this is probably a pattern that he spotted with similar compounds and similar pathways and knows to expect this somewhat. I don't think it's bad advice at all. All he's saying here is, look, this boosts up mitochondrial activity so much and so strongly that you might actually, while you're helping the efficiency and the health of the mitochondria in some aspects, it's like overclocking your RAM on your computer or putting a big turbo on your car. It'll help it go faster. It'll make that engine healthier for a minute, but it could put stress on it. And over time, you know, something could blow. So the idea there is take a break, you know, heal that mitochondria. I was very encouraged to hear that he was recommending Mott C. That's something I plan to introduce myself, and it sounds great for that kind of mitochondrial health support. Now, if you came here only to find out whether I agree with Mr. Kickle or not, well, there's your answer. I think he probably knows what he's talking about. It just brought up something very interesting to me that I think could be of value to several, maybe not all, but to a lot of guys out there, especially guys that are getting into their 40s and 50s. And the issue that I'm going to bring up is called under methylation. When we increase the activity of our mitochondria, it needs methyl donors to support the processes that are happening there. It uses a lot of the methyl donors that we often use for other processes in the body. And as a result, we can get depleted on methyl donors and it can actually cause some rundown, fatigue, some anxiety, and even kind of a manic state due to an increase in noradrenaline. Now, a lot of people like to argue against this because they don't understand it, and I didn't understand it until a good friend reached out when I was using NAD Plus injectable in a high amount for a week, two weeks straight, and all of a sudden I was like, Ugh, I'm getting antsy, what has happened? I feel uncomfortable. So I, my friend reached out and he says, you're one of those guys that doesn't have the abundance of enzymes to convert the necessary methyl donors to support all these functions in your body. So the NAD is actually using so much of that and depleting so much that you're left struggling and kind of out of whack. And then with high noradrenaline to kind of compensate and keep you going because your ATP is so drained. He says what you need is a strong methyl donor or a few methyl donors to restore that balance. I did a video on this about a year ago as it relates to potential causes for roid rage in using things like nandrolone or trenbolone for some people. And I'm pretty sure that's what Big Paul was talking about in his video here when he says, I'm done with DECA and NPP. He describes exactly what I went through years ago, finding that out for myself that I just can't handle those well, at least in normal doses. And now I think I know why. Let's take a look at a little clip from that video that explains some of this. Real, what? Real brief. What does norepinephrine have to do with nandrolone just because they both have nor, blah, blah, blah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's a quote. In the adrenal medulla, norepinephrine is converted to epinephrine in a methylation step catalyzed by the enzyme, essentially, that transfers norepinephrine to epinephrine. Some of us lack this transferase enzyme, so we don't convert or we have a very small amount of it. Taking extra methyl donors can actually help that situation by allowing more of that transfer to happen from noradrenaline to adrenaline. This person that was 
you know, calling me out here, says epinephrine is also much more potent feeling than norepinephrine, not the other way around. So for part two, norepinephrine can lead to euphoria, very happy feelings, but are also linked to panic attacks, elevated blood pressure, and hyperactivity. And the hyperactivity that it describes in that scenario is exactly what I was going through last night. And I, my muscles had flattened out. I was probably burning up a lot of the ex, you know, glycogen in my muscles, and I was just, the noradrenaline was too high. It's a good little summation here. Can you explain why, when I inject NAD plus for a week, and I'll get into SLU in just a moment, I would start to run into problems with undermethylation? Your observation that daily NAD plus injections can lead to undermethylation over time is consistent with how the body processes NAD at high levels. The link to enzymes like COMT, let's say, which methylates noradrenaline is a key part of this mechanism, the methyl sink caused by NNMT. The primary driver of NAD plus induced undermethylation is the enzyme nicotinamide in methyl transferase. So that methyl transferase is the enzyme I was talking about that some of us do not produce enough of. And when that happens, we end up with high noradrenaline levels, which as that one guy was saying in the comments, that makes you feel good, that doesn't make you feel bad. Based on what? The basic information there is talking about hyperactivity, anxiety. No, I, I don't wanna feel that. I'd rather just feel like get up to go, regular adrenaline, not noradrenaline. The methyltransferase enzyme is responsible for breaking down the catecholamine neurotransmitters, including noradrenaline, dopamine, and epinephrine. So it's not just that it we have no, more noradrenaline, we have more noradrenaline, dopamine, epinephrine. So epinephrine is adrenaline. Noradrenaline is norepinephrine. So it, it's all kind of the same thing. It's adrenaline. So what happens is, is we can't break those down. We can't metabolize them. So now we just amped up, right? So what's the simple solution to something like this? Right off the bat, I have a pound of betaine anhydrous, which is trimethylglycine, that I keep on hand all the time. You've got about I think it's a one gram scoop, 1.5 gram scoop. The recommended dose, uh, the recommended normie dose is up to three grams per day. Now, if you're running a bunch of NAD or a bunch of SLU or you're having trouble on DECA or something like that, you know, you're gonna want more than that. I take about three times that much when I'm doing something like I've been doing with this SLU and I just remembered to start taking it last night. So there we are. As soon as I started taking this, and it could be a little bit of placebo, but those processes are happening at the brain level instantly. The results were obvious. After about two hours, my girlfriend says, hey, you really have calmed down, because I was, I was almost manic. Um, I'm kind of a nervous, anxious person anyway, so that's probably not too far away. But anything that can help kind of keep, you know, that comfortable feeling, relaxed, and this is great for that. So a lot of people talk about glycine for improving sleep. Now this is trimethylglycine, it has aspects of glycine, but the trimethyl is the aspect that we're looking for here because there's lots of methyl donors. Can you explain to me how using SLUPP332 in high doses might lead to undermethylation over time based on its known mechanism as an estrogen-related receptor alpha agonist and the broader understanding of metabolic and epigenetic pathways, a theoretical basis exists for how high doses could lead to undermethylation over time. This is theoretical, but this is a complex biological process and the following explanation based on current scientific hypothesis and observations, not necessarily conclusions, and not, yeah, established facts, right? The link between SLU and undermethylation is not direct, but occurs via a series of cascading effects. It's, the, it's a roundabout way, but it's still getting to the same place. It's a potent estrogen receptor alpha agonist, a transcription factor that regulates metabolism and mitochondrial function. By activating ERRA, estrogen receptor alpha, SLU mimics exercise at a cellular level. Step two, this upregulates the expression of PGC1-alpha, a master regulator of mitochondrial biogenesis and energy metabolism. This leads to increased mitochondrial activity and fat oxidation. Then they show a reciprocal relationship where methylation inhibits PGC1-A and changes PGC1-A activity that can influence methylation patterns. At a, in high metabolic states, PGC1A is often upregulated, 
which could lead indirectly to changes in overall methylation. So, in other words, if you're already screwed up in your ability to methylate, this could complicate things a little bit. But the solution is very cheap. A pound of this is like 20 bucks, I think. Maybe. Maybe not even that. And it'll last a really long time because you're only doing several grams a day. Now here's the cascading effect. So now you might have high noradrenaline levels from something else you're doing or from this. And now this is how high noradrenaline levels drain methyl groups. The exercise mimetic effect by inducing a high a state of high metabolic demand could also lead to an increase in sympathetic nervous system activity. That means, ugh, you know, tension, neurotic, you know, resulting in circulating, high circulating noradrenaline. There's all kinds of things that this can influence along these lines. So, if you're taking SLU and you're doing good at first because you're doing moderate to high doses, and you're like, wow, this is great. I'm fuller, I'm bigger, and I'm leaner, and then all of a sudden you start to be not as full. My skin dries out when this happens, when I'm undermethylating, and I kind of broke out a little bit. I guess the goon light doesn't show it, but thankfully. But when you start to see those symptoms and you're feeling fatigued and off and weird, even though you're on this thing that's supposed to be providing energy, you might have overdid it, and now you don't have enough methyl donors to keep the process going. So again... I don't sell this stuff. There wouldn't be any point to it. It's already available for cheap in bulk. So if you're one of these guys like me, or if you're just middle-aged or pushing that direction, and you want to fool around with NAD+, uh, SLU, some kind of 19 NOR, you might find yourself having this come in handy. And funnily enough, an, a few other things can actually help along this process anecdotally. I like to put some creatine with this because it really tends to soak it right into the muscle too. Get it where we need it. Get more of those. <clears throat> I know that sounds funny, but my theory is, is that creatine, and again, I can't back this up, you know, draws in water into the muscle, right? Well, if you've got circulating methyl donors while you're pulling in fluid, you know, maybe you're getting a little more absorption out of it. So I combine it with creatine. Creatine supports the ATP process. That's less demand on, you know, it's more support for the mitochondria. Win-win, so the basics, creatine, betaine anhydrous, good diet, and you should be back on track, in addition to maybe backing off the dose for a few days. So that's all I got for today. I hope you found some of this interesting, and I'll see you on the next one.